Your honor guests and viewers, good morning. This is Tefatin Dido Beltran of the PIO. Before we begin, allow me to give a few instructions on how to go about using the Zoom app, what to do while the chief is delivering his message, how to go about with the Q&A, and I will also give an overview of the program flow. Our admin is composed of a team from the PIO. Attorney Brian and I are the hosts or the floor directors for the program. All of us are on board to troubleshoot and to address glitches. We have control over the technical side of the platform. With us is also a representative from the MISO to address our internet connection. We will be doing a simultaneous live stream of the Zoom meeting on our official YouTube page, which link will also be uploaded to our official Twitter and Facebook pages for public consumption. The hosts will mute all of the participants once the program starts. We will start with the ecumenical prayer, national anthem, and the Supreme Court hymn. After these, Attorney Brian will introduce the Chief Justice and he will deliver his message. We will then proceed with the Q&A. Everyone will still be on mute at this point. The only time the hosts will unmute a participant is when he or she is recognized to ask a question. We will only entertain questions from members of the Justice Beat. Should you wish to ask a question, kindly send a message to the chat box of the Zoom meeting. The admin will call on you in the order as posted on the chat. Please wait to be recognized before you ask your question. You will be unmuted when it is your turn to ask and will be put back on mute after. This is in order to avoid unnecessary noise and to properly hear each other. After the Q&A, Attorney Brian will close the program and all the participants may then press the leave button. Thank you very much and let's now begin the program. Almighty God, we stand in your holy presence as our supreme judge. We humbly beseech you to bless and inspire us so that what we think, say, and do will be in accordance with your will. Enlighten our minds, strengthen our spirit, and fill our hearts with fraternal love, wisdom, and understanding so that we can be effective channels of truth, justice, and peace. In our proceedings today, guide us in the path of righteousness for the fulfillment of your greater glory. Amen. Oh, <laughs> 
I'd like to call on Attorney Brian Hosaka, Chief of the Public Information Office, to introduce the Chief Justice. Chief Justice. Chief Justice Justado M. Peralta, Court Administrator Jose Maidas P. Marquez, members of the Justice Beat, composed of the Justice Reporters Organization, or Juror, and Justice and Court Reporters Association, or JUCRA, and to all viewers watching online through the internet. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I thank you all for joining us in this media event presented by the Supreme Court Public Information Office entitled, CJ Meets the Press Online, Moving, beyond just, moving Justice Beyond the Pandemic. This is the first time that an event such as this will be done online. So please bear with us should we experience some technical difficulties. Last December 2019, the COVID-19 virus outbreak started, started in Wuhan, China. It rapidly spread across the globe. And on January 30, 2020, the virus reached the Philippines. On March 7, 2020, the first local transmission in the Philippines was confirmed. With the cases of infection worldwide rapidly escalating, the World Health Organization on March 11, 2020, declared a COVID-19 global pandemic. At that time, the WHO reported that the number of cases outside China had increased 13-fold and the number of affected countries had tripled in only two weeks. According to the WHO, as of March 11, 2020, a total of 124,101 cases and 4,583 deaths worldwide were recorded. However, as of June 9, 2020, the number of infections globally had ballooned to more than 7 million cases with more than 400,000 deaths. In the Philippines, since March 11, 2020, where there were only 49 cases and a single casualty reported, the COVID-19 inf infection has alarmingly increased and has now reached more than 23,000 cases with more than 1,000 deaths. Immediately after the WHO declared a global pandemic, it did not take long for the judiciary led by Chief Justice Peralta to immediately act in order to safeguard the health of its justices judges, personnel, lawyers, and litigants, particularly persons deprived of liberty or PDLs. The Chief Justice, however, made sure that the wheels of justice will not halt. From March 12, 2020, up to this date, Chief Justice Perata had issued a total of 20 administrative circulars and memos. Each circular and memo addressing a particular concern or issue brought about by the global pandemic, as well as the lockdown imposed by the government as a measure to curb the spread of the virus in our country. 
For those who may not be familiar with the Chief Justice, he is a stickler for rules, and for him, rules are made to be followed. However, during this health crisis, I saw how his expertise and knowledge in procedural law, or what we call rules of court, coupled with his vast experience in trial proceedings as a former prosecutor and judge, help him adroitly craft solutions to problems, to problems and concerns of our magistrates, lawyers, litigants, and PDLs. What the Chief Justice did was no small feat, for his solution had to be within the bounds of our procedural laws, which did not cease to remain effective despite the dire crisis we were all facing. Hence, the solutions could not have been as simple as some might have perceived, including even legal experts. I will no longer delve into the details of the orders, circulars, and memos of the Chief Justice, for he is the best person to explain and discuss them. So without further delay, I would like to introduce you to the 26th Chief Justice of the Philippines, Chief Justice Josdado Madarang Peralta. Thank you very much, Attorney Brian Osaka. Members of the Justice and Court Reporters Association, or the JOCRA. Members of the Justice Reporters Organization, or JURUR. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It feels a bit peculiar to be addressing you in this manner. Just last year, we had our first meet and greet at the SC Training Center shortly after my appointment as the 26th Chief Justice. I would have wanted a similar setup for this year, but then COVID-19 happened. While this virulent virus has slowed down or even put to a halt global commerce, every government worldwide unceasingly and tirelessly work as they struggle to get ahead of this disease. The judiciary is no exception. Thanks to technology, it allowed me and the other members of the court to discuss important matters while strictly observing physical distancing. Admittedly, I am not a techie person, and so I had to catch up and familiarize myself with those so-called online meetings and other innovations. Marung na akong magsum. I and the other justices rock, out, rock our brains to come up with creative and effective schemes to ensure that the fields of justice will continue grinding without putting at risk the lives of employees, lawyers, and the public. And so I issued several administrative circulars to keep the judiciary functioning even before the start of the lockdown. All these COVID-related circulars, orders, and issuances have been timely uploaded by the court's public information office to the SC website for the information of everyone. Early on in March, I issued memorandum order 25-2020, detailing guidelines in the workplace as a precautionary measure to avoid the spread of COVID. I even created a task force chaired by the court administrator to come up with additional measures to minimize the rising threat of COVID. The court has several other issuances to address the health care in the workplace. When the government eventually placed the national capital region and the whole of Luzon under enhanced community quarantine or ECQ, I issued circular administrative circular number 32-2020, ordering the physical closure of all courts nationwide due to the unabated rise of COVID-19. But while the courts were physically closed, Judicial service continued as we opened hotlines and published email addresses where litigants, lawyers, prosecutors, and the general public may reach us. For urgent matters, I instructed all justices or judges on duty, together with the skeleton staff, to go to the court to immediately act on them. Subsequently, upon consultation with the members of the court, I issued administrative share coral number 33-2020, allowing the online filing of complaint or information and posting of bail of detention prisoners. This enabled the courts to digitally act on the matters, thereby reducing the necessity of the judge, the court staff, lawyers, and litigants to physically travel to their stations. 
Even with the lockdown, I work from home, making sure that I closely monitor the situation of the courts throughout the country. I continuously work even when I had symptoms of the disease. As I had previously disclosed, I went on official business to The Hague, Netherlands in the first week of March to attend The Hague Conference on Private International Law, General Affairs and Policy Making. There were already reported COVID cases in Europe. Then during my travel, fortunately, I, stay, I tested negative of the disease. As the government lockdown was extended several times, I had to issue circulars to guarantee that judicial service will not be disrupted. I also directed all justices and judges to continue drafting decisions and orders. These decisions and orders shall be promulgated or issued once the courts are fully operational. On April 27, I issued administrative circular number 37-2020, ordering the pilot testing of hearings of criminal cases involving persons deprived of liberty or PDLs through video conferencing in court stations identified by the Office of the Court Administrator. Let, let me underscore though, underscore though that as early as June last year, the court had already approved the guidelines and the use of video conferencing technology for the remote appearance and testimony of certain persons deprived of liberty or PDLs in jails and national penitentiaries. These guidelines were implemented and, and pilot tested in September 2019 in Davao City Courts. The, the virtual hearings were initially limited to 22 courts. Banking on the success of the pilot testing in Davao, and with the COVID health scare, the Supreme Court soon provided some 1,000 trial courts in key cities nationwide with the official Philippine judiciary 365 accounts each. The Philippine judiciary 365 has enabled all court stations nationwide to receive pleadings electronically and select courts in key cities to conduct video conferencing hearings. These 1,000 trial courts were initially authorized to pilot test the conduct of video conferencing hearings only on urgent matters in criminal cases involving PDLs. The court, however, eventually expanded the coverage of video conferencing hearings to all matters pending in both criminal and, and civil cases, whether newly filed or pending, and regardless of the stage of the trial. Subsequently, some 350 more courts were authorized to conduct video conferencing hearings, bringing the total number to 1,350 courts. As shared by Court Administrator Midas Marquez to our judicial neighbors in the Asian during a recent web webinar hosted by the Judicial Integrity Network in Asia titled Justice in Times of COVID-19, some 22,522 PDLs have been already released since the lockdown in March, either through bail or recognizance, or after serving the minimum imp impossible penalty for the crime they were charged. I would have wanted to particip participate in the webinar and presented the data myself, but it was also on the same day that the Judicial and Bond Council held its first ever online panel interview of the applicants for the vacant position of the CA Associate Justice. I prioritized and presided the activity of the JBC being its ex officio chair. In anticipation of the general community quarantine GCQ to be imposed in the NCR and other areas, I made another issuance, Administrative Circular number 40-2020, directing, among others, that all branches of the course in the areas under GCQ be physically open with a skeleton staff by rotation to be determined by the presiding judge. We even allowed civil weddings to be solemnized, provided that the parties, witnesses, and guests shall not exceed five, notwithstanding the guidelines on the pace transition from ECQ to GCQ, which allows a maximum of 10 individuals during mass gatherings in the GCQ areas. The Supreme Court was back on full operation on June 1st, the first day of the GCQ in NCR. In preparation for this, I made sure that the court had placed health safeguards for all returning officials and employees. We installed these infection chambers, dubbed as SC's automated frontliners, located at the lobby of the, SM, of the SC main building, 
and near the entrance of the Centennial Building in Padre Faura, Manila. Since most of the justices are already senior citizens, my, myself included, kahit, kahit wala naman sa itsura, the court also placed acrylic dividers in between the seats in the end bank conference room so that we can strictly observe the required physical distancing during deliberations. Likewise, rapid tests were conducted among SC employees with prior coordination with the City of Manila and the Philippine Red Cross by the course of medical personnel. Only those who have tested negative are allowed to enter the SC premises. Incidentally, the SC is celebrating its 119th year today. Unlike in previous years, we are breaking tradition by commemorating the court's anniversary today without the usual fanfare and merriment. It, however, remains a meaningful celebration. As Chief Justice, it is my fervent hope for the judiciary to not let even this pandemic dampen our determination as public servants to continue promoting an effective and responsive judiciary. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my fellow justices of the court and all the officials and employees of the SC for answering the call of service and rising to the occasion during these most difficult times to ensure that, that access to judicial service continues unhampered. I would like to assure all that I shall do everything within my authority as Chief Justice to safeguard everyone's health and welfare as we all fulfill our constitutional duties and function. A pleasant morning to all. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much, Chief Justice. We will now call on the members of the media to ask their questions in the order as it appeared in the chat box. Our first question is from Mr. Ray Panaligan of Manila Bulletin. Hi, good morning po, Chief Justice, and uh, good morning to everyone. Yeah, yeah. And good morning uh, also, uh, Mang Ray. Opo. I think, I think the you are the most senior among us. Opo, mas matanda pa nga po ako sa inyo. <laughs> go ahead please, go ahead please. Okay. Sir, ang question ko, my question is about video conferencing. Yes. Considering that about 1,500 trial courts nationwide are now engaged in this online hearing of cases and more than 22,000 PDLS, persons deprived of liberty, have been released through video conferencing. Uh, last June 3, Associate Justice Leonen aired some constitutional issues yeah. in connection with video conferencing, such as lack of transparency of the procedure, right to uh, confront witnesses, and process and process of authentication. Yeah. Justice Leonen said that the court has been tackling these issues. Yeah. Have you, or has the Supreme Court, resolved these constitutional yeah. concerns? Oh, that, yeah. that, that's a good question, uh, Ray. Only yesterday, we started already with the uh, deliberation on the proposed uh, rules on video conferencing. Now, uh, your, your question is a little bit long, so my answer will be also a little bit long. So that I can explain very well why we adopted video conferencing. It's like this, no? The video conferencing actually, actually is not in our rules. There is no rule that allows video conferencing except that this, except that one that is now under pilot testing in Dabao. When the problem of, uh, of uh, closure of the courts, and the problem came up with closure of the courts and only urgent matters were there being taken up, there were concerns uh, brought to me by judges and even practitioners, especially the court administrator, that we had to do something because our courts are not doing. So we came out with, because we were officially closed, so we came out with the resolution. You know, if you are a judge in, in Manila, you're a judge in Manila, no? then your territorial jurisdiction is only within Manila. So if you conduct a video conferencing in your residence somewhere in Paranaque, there is a question whether or not that judge can hear a hearing outside the territorial jurisdiction. So that's one of the concerns probably just explained. But we were able to resolve that because under the rules of court, under the rules of court, there is what we call a mode of discovery, which we call oral deposition. And in oral deposition, the testimony witness may be taken outside the territorial jurisdiction of the court. That's why if you look at the circular that I issued, 
video conferencing is akin to a deposition. That was that is the one that justifies the video conferencing when the ports were closed. Because they cannot go to the respective corporate, so we, we allowed that now. In criminal cases, because there is now a, uh, a, a pilot testing in Dabao, what we did was, in order that the other courts can also conduct video conferencing in criminal cases, we expanded the coverage of the pilot testing because those rules were already published in June. And you know, the uh, rules of the court shall be published. There must be deliberation, must be placed because rules may become the law. So instead of coming out with rules on video conferencing and then it will uh, take time, what we did in criminal cases was to expand the pilot testing of the video conferencing in Dabao. That's why we were able, yeah, that's why we, we were able to, huh? okay, okay. That's why we were able to, uh, to apply the video in criminal cases outside. Now, this is now the concerns, okay. There's no problem, probably, in video conferencing of a testimony of the witness now, in civil cases. There may be no problem now in civil cases. Mm -hmm. But maybe there may be a problem of uh, video conferencing in the testimony of, of a criminal case, because the accused might raise the issue that I have the right to confront the witnesses. And a trial should be public in nature. That's what this one. The other one is this. No? That's why we are very careful in they saying that video conferencing should not be the new normal. No, you know, if you are if you are a good lawyer, no, public prosecutor, or a judge, there is what we call demonstrative evidence, where where if a witness would like if a witness is testifying, he can be cross-examined by asking him to sketch the places where the incidents took place. He might also be he might also be asked to demonstrate how the victim was killed or how the accused defended himself in self-defense. You cannot do that in video conferencing. That's what we call demonstrative evidence. So these are the concerns probably of Justice Lunen. And we are not trying to address those problems in this uh, in this uh, particular case, in criminal cases. And probably probably before the end of the year, we'll be able to come up with a with rules on video conferencing, both in civil cases and criminal cases. Okay, now, when there was no more lockdown, in other words, it's now a GCQ, and therefore the courts are not operating, uh, then we have not to apply the rule that the testimony of the witness should not be taken on site. Actually, the judge is already there. But that will not, that will not prevent the judge from conducting a video conferencing because that is still within the circular that I issued. So you know, video conferencing is still continuous, is still continue, will still continue. And until until some time that we came out with uh, rules, probably we'll, uh, we will come out with rules on testimonies and also on other matters, not only testimony. Not let's go to the criminal cases. In criminal cases, the video conferencing that we have now in Dabao is unique. What we did, what we are doing in Dabao is that the, the judge conducts a trial inside the courtroom. And there are two cameras focused on the judge and focused on the witness. The PDL is in the jail. And the city jail provided a, an office, no? similar to a court, where the, where, the, uh, where the detention prisoner can view what is happening inside the courtroom because he has also a big TV monitor. And the, we allow the lawyer to sit with the judge. I mean, with the accused, or even the counsel can also appear into the courtroom. So, the face-to-face -face trial, maybe I you know, maybe uh, maybe uh, already may, maybe uh, maybe already satisfied because of that system, because he can see what is happening and so on. The yung, yung zooming is a is is a funny, it's a uh, iPhone. No, the the problem there is, you know, I hope they will not do this, but. Supposing you're being, the test is being taken. What appears in the iPhone is your face. Eh? What about in your surrounding? You cannot see or it goes in, in your surrounding. So okay. we do not also want to go on with video conferencing and then we will be sacrificing justice. No, There might be miscarriage of justice, especially in criminal cases. But as I said, in those cases where video conferencing, video conferencing does not cover testimony like plea bargaining, plea of guilty, 
promulgation of judgment, reduction of bail bond, no problem because there's no testimony being taken. So that's why we have 22,000 22, uh, already released of, uh, of release PDLs because of this video conferencing. Magkakaroon lang ng problema sa video conferencing in so far as a testimony of the witness is concerned. So that's a long answer. I hope uh, I hope you were able, everybody understood my, my explanation. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Pa. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Penaligan. Our next question will be coming from Tina Panganiban Perez of GMA News. Yes, yes, Tina. Good morning, Paul Chief Justice. Good morning. The question Mara. is very short, but you can give a long answer. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> how has the pandemic affected the speedy resolution of cases? Has it set back the courts? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, a, a little bit, a, a little bit, but. Uh, those those uh, cases that should have been heard, you know, in a regular on a regular pace during pandemic, it was not done. But why I'm happy also that in spite of the pandemic, there were many matters that were taken up, that were taken, but like release of PDLs, and also there were promulgation of judgments that were done. No, we were not uh, zero in accomplishment. In fact, we did a lot. Uh, to me, it was unexpected. But as I said, no, everybody cooperated, lawyers, fiscal, everybody cooperated. That's why we achieved so much. To me, it was an it was unexpected. You can just imagine in two months' time, we were able to release 22,200 PDLs. You could just imagine if they were not released and then brought to the to, to the PJMP, which already overcrowded. You can just imagine the, the, uh, the effect. No? So I'm happy with the performance of the judiciary. And I hope likewise. The public has accepted what uh, what we've been is accepting what we've been doing during this difficult time. Talagang iba talaga. But you know, I tell you this, no? I I I think uh, we were warned. Eh. Kami, eh. you know, as early as June, we were already thinking of video conferencing because we were there were already rules. In fact, the pilot test na namin. Kung wala kami pinilot test ang pilot testing because they face a problem on video conferencing in criminal cases. Eh. Because there is no specific rule on video conferencing, that's why I have to look for a way to apply video conferencing. So, we are very lucky that we have already in these rules. The other thing is that it was also providential, probably on our part, because we made the rules of civil procedure effective June 1. The effective in June 1, these rules now allow the filing of of pleadings through emails, lahat na eh, lahat, lahat na. And there were those who were saying, eh, dapat yan, i-reset natin, sabi niya. Have we reset it as to the effectivity? You can just imagine, madidelay ang proceedings. Now, that is June 1, pleadings are now filed through emails. And then notices can now be served to private couriers. We, do, we did not allow that before. Eh. Kaya maswerte rin kami. I think it's providential. All, all those good things uh, came down all at the same time. To address the problems that the Supreme Court, the problem that the Supreme Court is facing now, eh. so maswerte ako marahil, <laughs> uh, maswerte ang Supreme Court, o oh, maswerte tayong lahat. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question, Ms. Tina Panganiban Perez. Our next question will be coming from CNN Philippines, Mr. Anjo Alimario. Anjo. Good morning, Chief. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Sir, my question is about uh, COVID testing. Sir, I think Justice Leon uh, some weeks ago said that the Supreme Court offered a free mass testing to trial courts. I think that's for Metro Manila. But some judges refused or don't want to avail of it. And he said uh, he found it very strange. And I'm curious, do you, do you share the same view? And won't SC make it mandatory for all courts in the country yeah. to undergo testing, or yeah. at least in Metro Manila, where the concentration of COVID cases yeah. Yeah. Uh, are located? Okay. okay. Now, the, the uh, what? No, yeah, I, I will first uh, discuss the circular that issued for Supreme Court justices and employees. Ano, huh? We made it mandatory for all employees, effective June 1, before they enter the, the Supreme Court, they have to undergo. Nobody complained about it. Now, now, there were judges who were saying that they should undergo also mandatory testing. 
But the problem is, the problem is there are more, you know, the judges are stationed outside of Metro Manila. So I told the court administrator that we will subject the judges, you know, if they want, come to the Supreme Court because they are near. And they, anyway, this is the epicenter, kasi eh. All, all the victims of uh, all the victims, most of the victims come from Metro Manila. So, so we pity them because uh, they do not have, uh, no, they do not have uh, probably testing in the respective uh, uh, places of work, especially in Manila, because it's scattered ang judges sa Metro Manila. Eh. Some are holding in private or their offices in private buildings, eh, not city hall. So, sabi ko, let's uh, let's ask let's uh, let's ask the judges to come to the Supreme Court free of charge. Ganon. But you know, meron yung mga may edad na eh. Uh, I don't know to, baka takot malaman ang sakit. Uh, like uh, like probably like uh, Mang Ray, uh, <laughs> yung, ano, eh, they are invoking yung ano daw, you are not vulnerable, mga 60 na sila, they are not supposed to report po. So marami sila lang rason eh. So I told the court administrator that that we have to do something and explain to them that this is this is for them eh. And it's not only for them, their, their employees themselves. Supposing he's positive, diba? and then we allow him to go to work. They want to complain among lawyers. So my instruction is that they have to undergo, they have to undergo mandatory test. Just counting explanation lang. Alam mo ang rason nila, takot malaman baka may sakit eh. Ganon talagang attitude ato yung mga tumatanda. Maybe a little bit stubborn marahil. But now, I think they are not undergoing. They now realize that there is a need eh, of uh, COVID testing. Now, the other problem, I, I, I will add another problem that was raised also. There was a judge somewhere in La Union that they should, they should also undergo rapid testing. Yeah, in La Union, there was a judge who said that he should undergo rapid testing. I said, the rapid testing is being done in the Supreme Court. He wants to come to Manila, then probably we'll, we'll, know, we'll test him for free. But, you know, traveling from La Union to Manila, you know, it will take a lot of time and, and resources because you have to use your private car. And I said, there's only one rapid testing. And they have a lot of money naman eh. <laughs> but that's a good question, huh? because that was also raised during our meeting yun sa task force namin. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Anjo. Yeah. Thank you very much, Anjo. Our next question will be coming from Lian Buan of Rappler. Lian? Uh, good morning po, Chief Justice. Yeah, good morning. Uh, my question po, um, in 2007, Chief, the Supreme Court under CJ Puno, uh, was proactive in the face of rising killings and disappearances and that it promulgated the rules on Amparo and the habeas data. My question is, does the Supreme Court see a similar urgency now and will it be as proactive as before given that there is also a report from the United Nations Human Rights Office that police are planting guns in crime scenes and that abuses are probably incited yeah. by the rhetoric of the president. There are no cases pending before the SC, you know, on Rito of Amparo, Rito of Hapiaro's data, there are no pending, no. We are still active you know, because the rules are still there. If there are complaints or uh, complaints that, uh, about uh, disappearances or unforced disappearances, and uh, surveillance, unnecessary surveillance, they can come to court and then file the necessary, the necessary petitions. And there are still, there are petitions pending now in the court of appeals and even in the Supreme Court on habeas data and, uh, and read of Amparo. Yeah. You know, it's still there. Thank you, huh? thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lian. Thank you. Thank Our you. next question will be coming from the Philippine Daily Inquirer, Ms. Donna Pazibugan Porcala. Ms. Donna? Justice? Yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> thank you for this opportunity to ask uh, these questions. Mr. Chief Justice, my question is uh, first, we would uh, may we hear from your thoughts on the uh, enforcement of our quarantine rules. What can you say to the double standard application of quarant community quarantine rules? No. Is there still justice under this <laughs> COVID crisis? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry I might not be able to answer your question ano, uh, because it is an opinion that might you know, be misinterpreted. So, excuse me. 
ano, please ask another question na lang. <laughs> Thank you, just the same too na. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Donna. Our next question will be coming from Ms. Christine Patag of philstar.com. Christine? Good morning, Justice. Yes, good morning. This is Christine Patag of philstar.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, my question is, is there a constitution, uh, constitutional basis for the government to prohibit holding of rallies when the state of public emergency is in place? <laughs> mayroon, mayroon, mayroon yung mga tanong yun. <laughs> I'm sorry, ah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, not be able, na. Uh, I'm sorry, I might not be able to answer your question, Tin. Ano, ah? okay. I'm sorry lang, sorry. But uh, I cannot, I cannot now give an answer to that question. Uh, Deep, very, very difficult question. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, sorry about that, Ms. Tin. Uh, our next question will be coming from Bomboradjo, Mr. Gerald Ulep. Gerald? Yes, the imbag uh, agsapa, Chief Justice. Uh, madali lang yung tanong ko, Chief Justice. Masasagot mo to. <laughs> Kasi sa kabilang uh, bakuran ninyo sa Department of Justice, marami-rami yung mga nagpositibo sa COVID-19 uh, doon sa rapid test. Kumusta po yung resulta ng uh, rapid test dyan sa Supreme Court? May mga nagpositibo rin po ba na mga empleyado ng Supreme Court? Well, ano, sa tingin ko, mga dalawa lang eh. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there, there were only two or three. But uh, after a confirmatory test, negative naman sila. Ma meron pa ba? Uh, susunod the uh, Chief Justice? The... Wala, wala na, wala na. I think uh, okay. I can, uh, tatlo lang ata yan. Eh. But uh, the result from, the result doon sa Philippine National Red Cross after a confirmatory test, negative naman sila. I think in the DOJ, uh, a little, uh, a little, I think a little more than 20. But sa kanila naman, eh, because it's rapid test, is positive, but uh, it has, they had yet to be confirmed by by Chinese General Hospital at if they are positive for COVID. Yeah. Okay po, so safe pala kahit uh, sinasabi nyo kanina na senior, most most vulnerable na yung mga ju justices po. <laughs> oh justice. yeah, but uh, if you come to the Supreme Court, uh, you will see you will see what we are doing in the Supreme Court. Mm. All visitors, ano, ha? we do not allow visitors from outside, but if you are a visitor of the your justices, then you can come here, but you have to undergo rapid test free because you are a visitor of the justice. No? Then we do not allow also uh, transactions. You know? In the meantime, it should be they should be transacted through the emails. Then we have also uh, disinfect uh, tents. Uh, we have two. And then uh, we, are, we are really very careful, no? We are really very careful. Everybody is uh, contributing, no? And, uh, and cooperating. So that, okay, marami. Be, so that there will be no, no one being contaminated with this disease or virus. Maraming salamat po, Chief Justice. Ano yung baga bigat mo? Ano yung baga bigat, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Gerald. Our next question will be coming from GMA News Online, Ms. Nicole Lagrimas. Nicole? Yes, Nicole. Good morning. Good morning, sir. This is connected to the question about video conferencing. Yes. You've talked about yung constitutional issues. I would like to follow up on the technological issues because some judges have uh, raised slow internet connection. How is the Supreme Court addressing this? Yeah, that is also, you know, well, I, I have employed one of the uh, experts, one of the experts in the technology, you know? I pirated him from another office and he's helping us a lot. I do not like to give his name because he might be pirated. So he's very good in technology and I have already advised him to come up with a better technology that will now be incorporated in the rules that we are now formulating, drafting. But if you are asking how effective it is, I, I can show you some data. You know? Now, from May 4 to 8, there were video conferencing uh, hearings conducted. There were 129. And the success rate is 93%. From May 11 to May 15, there were 665 video conferencing con hearings conducted. And the success rate is 96%. Then from May 18 to May 22, there were 2,406 
video conferencing hearings, and the success rate is 93%. Then from May 25 to May 29, there were 4,424 video conferencing hearings conducted, and the success rate is 91%. So the average would be around 94%. So probably the six percent is the, the the one that uh, gave us uh, the one that a portion that was that gave us the problem probably on technology. So this is only a small portion, a small percentage. Yeah, but I, I agree with you that in some places, especially the far from places, there's clearly a problem on technology. But we will try to address that. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you also. Thank you so much, Nicole. Our next question will be coming from Inquirer.net. Ms. Tetch, Torres to pass. Tetch. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Tetch. Uh, sir, um, part ng uh, agenda ninyo is incorporating technology in hearings and trials. Yeah. Um, where are we now in with regards to execution? Kasi everything should be done fast. Parang lahat nag yeah, yeah. in creating policies. How is the Supreme Court adjusting in terms of budget, purchasing the equipments, and yung trainings ng mga judges? The, in so far as video conferencing is uh, concerned, I think we don't have any more problems. Maybe it's uh, little problems, but we are, uh, we are there now, and then we are implementing. We continue to implement it. But if you are asking for other technology like e-court hearing, yes. and uh, it's not being tested, piloted, because e-court hearing is different from video conferencing. Yung e-court kasi, it will be a, uh, it will be a uh, trial, trial now, and the video conferencing is actual testimony uh, outside the courtroom. So yung video conferencing, I think uh, a little a little policing and uh, and then addressing some of the concerns of uh, my my colleague about constitutional uh, in, you know it might be constitutional infirmities but in so far as uh, others like e court we are now uh, in the process of uh, testing no pilot testing the court system but they have already applied also like uh, e court like in the uh, e subpoena in, in, in subpoena to uh, to our uh, friends from the PNP and from the uh, NBI, I think, and then also uh, e, e, you know e raffle, no? Marami na rin eh. Ang inintay na lang namin probably yung yung ano yung yung e e, e trial, so that warrant. Uh, and e warrant, yeah. Sir, um, follow-up question, sir. What about yung management po ng court records? Kasi uh, may na-mention si Senator Recto yesterday about uh, establishing a Google-like search for outstanding warrants. Kasi given yung nangyari doon sa Piston 6 na yung isa hindi siya agad nakalabas dahil they still need to verify kung siya nga yung may pending arrest warrant. I think the the she you know she court admires Marcus is here. He's familiar with the e warrant, no, so that he can explain it to you. Yeah, I'll give the mic to court administrator Maidas Marquez. Yeah. Well, uh, Ted, good morning, no? and good morning everyone. Well, uh, that's uh, correct. No? Uh, actually, prior to the COVID nineteen uh, issue, we were already in discussions with the uh, PNP and the NBI or a uh, e-warrant no so ang mangyayari noon is uh, when a court issues a warrant it will go directly to the database of the PNP and the NBI so lahat yon nakakompile and then uh, they uh, they will also be updating us uh, where the warrants have, have the warrants been served or unserved tapos lahat ng mga pangalan nandoon so right away to sa database na yon makikita natin lahat kung meron pa mga uh, individuals whose uh, warrants have not been served and kung sila ba yung the same individual no, that are involved in uh, different cases. So you're referring dun sa NJIS? Ito na ba yun? Iba pa yung NJIS. Iba pa yun. Uh, ito sa warrants pa lang to. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cortad, and thank you so much, Ms. Tetch. Our next question will be coming from Mike Navalio of ABS-CBN. Mike? 
Good morning. Uh, good morning, Chief. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, re I remember you. Yeah, the UP Maroons <laughs> lost to UST. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, Chief Justice. Sir, I'll, I'll be asking about the current case, but I understand that you cannot comment on the merits. But may mm -hmm. I ask uh, on the status, for instance, on the ABS-CBN TRO petition, uh, has it been submitted for resolution? It is, it, is, it is scheduled for... Uh, for another you know, for another discussion on July 13 I think yeah because there are there were actually there there were two then there was there was another one that was filed there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. if you are talking about the uh, cease and desist order mm -hmm. that is scheduled for deliberation July 13 in mm -hmm. so far as the one that was filed last Monday the member in charge asked for deliberation this coming Tuesday because that case was only raffled last uh, Monday afternoon. So we did not have time to go over the record, but that is also scheduled this Tuesday. Mm -hmm. The other one that was filed by the first one, the other one that was filed by Atlone Gadungaito, you know already what happened. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So you know the status of the Yeah. Uh, Chief, the clarification on the status of the TRO plea, just the prayer for temporary restraining order, because I understand the... Uh, there was no mention of that before. Uh, uh, a spokesperson, uh, Osaka, has already clarified that has, that hasn't been acted upon yet. Uh, but, but, there are there are uh, statements going around social media that it has been denied. Yes. Uh, what is the status, sir, about the, the, the one that the one that uh, your company asked for? Asked yes. for? Kayo? Has it but been? That, received? No, no, that will be deliberated on July 13 because we waited we waited for the comments. Of the house of represent the lower house and the upper house, and then we only I think we only received the comments uh, last Monday or last Friday. So the member in charge asked for July 13 for the, for deliberation. All right, chief. Uh, we will we will wait for it July 13. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Yeah. Thank you so much, Attorney Mike. Thank you so much, Attorney Mike. Our next question will be coming from Isa O'Malley of DZWB. Isa. Hello, Paul. Good morning, CJ. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, CJ. Opo, I'm Isa Umali po from DZWB. Marami po kasi mga callers sa amin na nagtatanong, ano daw po ba yung guidelines sa court hearings ngayon na may COVID-19 pandemic? Kasi marami pong mga tao na nagtatanong hindi alam kung dapat ba silang pumunta sa korte or dapat ba silang mag-communicate muna sa kanilang mga abogado or sa mga judge ng mga courts. Kasi ngayon daw po, as per do sa mga tao, wala daw pong malinaw na inilalabas na guidelines yung uh, court natin. Video conferencing? Ha, video conferencing ba? Ang ah, tanong? Kahit po yung hindi lang video conferencing. Halimbawa, kailangan pa po ba nilang aktual na pumunta sa mga korte? Ngayon nga yeah, po, mayroon yeah. pa rin tayong pan yeah. pandemic. May banta pa rin po ng COVID-19. Na, yeah. the, the judge should now schedule the uh, schedule of uh, the trial. Huh? Now, if the parties would like to avail of video conferencing, then they will have to file a motion. If the other party does not object, then it will not depend on the discretion of the court to grant video conferencing. Hindi, ko, hindi po kasi automatic yun eh. Kasi pag sinabi mo at, at, automatic, mas lalong magulo. But in the circular, we already mentioned, inagay namin doon, that it should be by motion, joint motion, or, or by order of the court. So, hintayin na lang yung order ng kusgado. Now, Kung hindi siya nakakatanggap ng notice, then that means that the judge is still uh, busy adjusting his schedule. Eh. Kasi there were cases that were scheduled during the pandemic. Yun ang inaayos nila. How to go about those cases that were not heard during the months of March, April, and May. So nag adjust ngayon yan. So probably, that person who asks you kung kailan ang vista, let, let her wait for the notice. Kasi very hard because after June 1 kasi, nagkaroon ng ano yan, daming cases that were that were filed. So, ang ginagawa ng mga judges, they are trying to uh, uh, adjust their schedule because as I said, there were cases that were scheduled for hearing during the pandemic. So, in-adjust nila o anong system ng gagamit. So, just tell your friend that wait for a notice from the court. If the if the client would like a video conferencing, then tell tell the lawyer, his, his or her lawyer, to file a motion and then proceed to a video conferencing 
Okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you also. Thank you so much, Isa. Our next question will be from Dian Buen again of Rappler. Dian? As Chief, sorry, I wasn't sure kanina if I was allowed to ask a follow-up. So I'll ask a follow-up and then I'll ask okay. my second question. That's okay. Okay, okay, so, no problem. Uh, my follow-up po kanina dun sa tanong ko, uh, ano na pong status ng Human Rights Committee that was supposed to be headed by Sandigan Bayan PJ Tang? And for my second question, Chief, because the Anand Bank has already acted on it, maybe you can discuss ano po yung naging decision on merit dun sa petition to disclose the health of President Duterte. What was the court's interpretation of Section 12, Article 7? Uh, you, uh, yeah. you, you just wait na lang po. <laughs> you know, we'll be... We'll be... I, I don't know. Have you not received yet the resolution of the court? Not yet. Po. Yeah. In due time, you will receive the resolution. I will overtake the resolution because the resolution will be drafted by the member in charge yung, and then it will be released after that. I think it will be released soon. Pasensya na lang muna. So, I unahan yung release of the resolution. But tapos na nga. Tapos na nga. Yeah. That's all right, Chief. Yung ano na lang po, follow-up ko po. Human yung rights. Yung, yung, yeah, you, you, that, you, it's good that you ask that, ano, you ask that question. Ano mo, I just uh, assumed my position last uh, November. Ano, and then, the, as you we, we all know, I had a 10-point program, so I gave preference to my 10-point program. Kaya lang na overtaken by this pandemic yung long March. So... Na, 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 kon, na konting na-delay yung mga projects natin. But that is a good question because that uh, Human Rights Committee was organized, I think, by the former Chief Justice. You know? I don't know if you... I think it was just Chief Justice. Yeah, it, was, it was actually organized by the former Chief. I will look into it. I will look to it. If there is a need to reorganize it or there is, uh, there is a need to change the, the members or require them to uh, start uh, having meetings pertaining to human rights. So, thank you, ah. Thank you, thank you, Pucci. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Lian. Uh, Chief, our next question will be coming from the Philippine News Agency, Mr. Benjamin Pulta. Um, hindi daw po gumagaling mic niya, so babasahin ko na lang po yung question. Uh -huh. Considering the concerns about online security and to ensure the integrity of online hearings against denial of service attacks from hackers, do you see a need for supporting legislation for this or would these acts be covered by the judiciary's contempt powers? Yeah. Alam mo, magandang, magandang tanong yan. Sino nagtanong? Benjamin Pulta po from PNA, Philippine News Agency. Benjamin Pulta. Now, it's like this kasi. Yung, uh, it's, if it pertains to procedures, ano, hearing, procedures, or procedures, ang may, ano yan eh, ang may uh, authority yan, eh, Supreme Court. So, if it is within the authority of the Supreme Court, Bested by the by the Constitution, kami ang gagawa ng rules, ano ba? So video conferencing is uh, procedural because it refers to a testimony of the witness. So probably kami ang gagawa niya ng ano ng na, na rule. Now, if however there is a need to have legislation, then we will we will ano we will uh, see to it that uh, we will ano we will seek the help of Congress. If there is a need of legislation, and that's why I said that is a good question because just to uh, just to illustrate to you uh, the importance of legislation is there now there is now a pending bill in Congress and in the Senate. It's about the amendment of the jurisdiction of the first level courts. When it comes to jurisdiction, wala kaming power jan. But we need the amendment of the uh, jurisdiction of first level courts because we want to uh, unclog or unburden the regional trial court, the second labor court of so many cases, especially drug cases. So our mind now overburden yung RTC. And how do we help them? Probably bring down some of those cases to the first level courts, where the first level courts have fewer cases than the RTC. So we went to, to, to Congress because it's not within the province of the Supreme Court to determine the jurisdiction of first labor courts. And so I am I'm, I'm, no, I'm thankful to them that they have gave uh, a importance to our uh, suggestion that they now amend. And Congress, I think, have already uh, finished the second reading and is now in the plenary for discussion. And we are waiting for that because that law will, 
expedite the resolution of, uh, resolution of cases, especially those that are filed before the first level court. So ganon ang system. If it has something to do with jurisdiction, then we go to the to Congress. If it is and it's just about substantive law, then we go to Congress. But if we if it's something to do with procedural law, then that is within our province. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chief. Our next question is coming will come from ABS CBN again, Mr. Mike Navalio. Attorney Mike. Chief, I'll ask again uh, regarding another current case. Uh, this is with respect to the petition of uh, some political prisoners asking for the release of uh, the sick and the elderly in light of the uh, pandemic. Uh, there are concerns, Chief, about the speed uh, yeah. with which the Supreme Court uh, is acting on the petition. So how would you explain to those who are asking why there is still no action on yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's a good question. No? Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, the, mem the, the member in charge cannot come now to Manila. And uh, there is no flight yet from, uh, from his, uh, no, from his uh, place in Visayas, I mean to Manila. But that is already submitted for deliberation. And you know, what we do in the Supreme Court is that we cannot tackle something if it is not deliberated upon. And the one and the one who will present the case to the NBANG is the member in charge. So I hope that I hope that he can come this Tuesday and I assure you that once that he's here, I, I believe that case will now be finally resolved. Chief, Chief, nga, yeah. Chief, if you don't mind, there's no option for that uh, member in charge to be able to participate in the unbanked session through uh, yeah, Zoom? Yeah, yeah. The, the current, the current kasi ng counting, ano eh, uh, technical problems. If, if he will not still come, he will not still be able to come Tuesday, then probably we will resort to uh, video conferencing. But you know, very hard to have a video conference. Hindi ba alas sana kung hindi siya kasi ang ponente, member in charge eh. And there will be, like, all questions will be focused to him eh. Mm -hmm. That's our problem. That's why sabi ko, well, how, how shall we do it if it is video conference? Kung buto lang yan, and then deliberations have already been terminated, he will just uh, leave his vote. Pwede yun eh. But mm -hmm. you cannot vote on something when there is no yet deliberation eh. Yes, and sir. the one who will lead the deliberation actually is the ponente. Kasi questions will be asked eh. So, yun ang problema namin. But jokingly, I, I told him, lumangoy ka na lang. <laughs> but, but I hope, I hope, because they opened already domestic flights, Tapos na yun eh. It's uh, only now that we have to follow what is the, you know, provided in the Constitution that we cannot we cannot vote on something if there is no deliberations. Eh. So uh, yung nga. But uh, as I said, I I believe I believe we can finish it this Tuesday. Chief, yeah. if you don't mind, balikan ko lang yung earlier question about dun sa ABS event petition. Uh, you mentioned July 13. No, uh, I no I said the the you know the. Uh, the case was set for the the set was case for July 13, no? Mm -hmm. But uh, it may it, when I say July 13, then it is it is uh, call again for July 13. So, I do not know if the resolution. I do not know if the resolution will already be ready. It is called again July 13. That's what I mean. Uh -huh. Chief, without discussing the merits, but uh, uh, are there any difficulties? With respect to that, you can discuss with respect to resol resolving an urgent TRO plea. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Or speaking on the merits, so you cannot discuss. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I understand. Okay. Thank you, Am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sayang, wala nang basketball ng UAP. <laughs> Next year. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, I think we have a question from Ms. Tina Panganiban Perez. Yes, yes, yes Ms. Tina. Pahabol po, Chief Justice. No um, problem. <laughs> may mga individuals po kasi, legislators, some groups, and even the IBP is questioning the constitutionality of the anti-terror bill. I know that it's still under review, but um, if anyone files a petition to question the constitutionality in case it becomes law, uh, Ano po yung magiging procedure? Will it be through video conferencing pa rin? Or what are your thoughts also on the... Yeah. On the yeah. If, if, if it will become a law, uh, then uh, anybody can... Uh, you know, if he's affected, then he can question the constitutionality of the law. So as a process, it, probably it will be filed before the court now. 
uh, it, 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 it will depend on the, the deliberations whether to conduct an oral argument or to require a comment first, conduct an oral argument. It will depend. It will depend on the issues, no? Because they might be asking only uh, veto of certain provisions or the veto of the whole law. So it will depend. Eh? Kasi meron yung mga the question, they question the, uh, I mean, they question the approval of the law. They only refer to a portion or a provision of the law. Sometimes they also want to declare the unconstitutional, the, the law as the whole law as unconstitutional. Sometimes only provision. Uh, sometimes they they argue that this uh, this provision should have been vetoed by the president because this is unconstitutional. So it will depend on the allegations and the issues that that that, that will be raised, and also it will also depend on the comment of the office of the solicitor general. If there are issues factual in nature, then we usually go to an oral argument. But if the issues are merely are uh, purely constitutional and there's no need to go and there's no need to determine the factual issues, then probably we just submit the case for decision based on the uh, responses and pleadings of the parties. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paul, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Tina. Um, our next question will be coming from Mr. Ray Paniligan of Manila Bulletin. Mr. Paniligan. Chief, uh, Chief Justice, follow-up question lang po on ABS-CBN. Sir, the July 13, uh, it's the, the case, the petition, is on agenda on July 13. Are we expecting a decision by July 13? Or no. is the ABS-CBN petition submitted for decision? Thank no. you very much, Paul. And uh, we do not we do not, we do not know yet because uh, the comments were filed. Kasi nang nang marami kasi nang comment eh. We were re we required the ano we required the Sorry, Congress first and second uh, yung Congress to write comments, and okay. then we also required ABS to file the reply on the comment of the Office of the Solicitor General. So nakaroon naman exchanges eh. So as what we usually do when uh, there are several pleadings that are filed and we are not ready to resolve it yet, we choose for a date. For the for, for the hearing Capital. or deliberation of that of that case, so the member in charge choose July 13. Okay, pa. So we just wait, na lang muna. Okay. Papa. Thank you very much, Coach. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Paniligan. Thank you so much to the members of Juror and Jokra for your questions for this morning. And to officially close this morning's program, I now call on again Attorney Brian Hasaka. Attorney Brian. With that, we conclude our event this morning. On behalf of the Society Public Information Office, I would like to thank Chief Justice Peralta, Court Administrator Marquez, and certainly not the least, our friends from media for making this event happen. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to reiterate the apology of the Chief Justice that there were questions na hindi niya may sasagot either because pending yung kaso or it calls for an opinion. Uh, we do hope that despite of that, this media interaction has been enlightening and fruitful to all the participants. More importantly, the general public who was viewing this online. Thank you very much. Stay safe and have a good day. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ah. Thank you. Thank Again, you. thank you everyone for joining the first ever online CG <laughs> the press with our very own Chief Justice. You may now press leave and have a good day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.